What's going on guys? You know why you're here. Today I'm going to review the fifth studio album by Panic at the Disco, Death of a Bachelor. Make sure you guys stay to the end of this video because I am doing a huge Panic at the Disco giveaway. And as we know, this is the first Panic album where Brendan Urie has pretty much full reign and control over everything involved in the album writing process. This record brings a lot with it. You know, it's all over the place, which a lot of people were complaining about that. Other people might like that. I personally kind of enjoy that it's all over the place and not really one specific sound. Um, each song kind of takes a different direction in its own way, and I understand why people say it doesn't really seem like a whole album. It seems more like a collection of different songs. But in all, Death of a Bachelor is yet another unique record from Panic of the Disco that sounds like nothing else they've done before. This album is a lot of fun for me, but I do understand how other people might not like it because it's very different. The album as a whole is definitely a salute to Frank Sinatra, so you can definitely hear that in a ton of these tracks. So the record opens up with Victorious. This is not one of my favorite songs on the record. Um, I just think it's a little bit too much at times. It's not that it's hard to listen to, it's just um, seems to be a lot for me. The beginning of it starts with like this chanting, and that definitely reminds me of Vegas Lights from Too Weird to Live. Um, with the children uh, counting. And I know a lot of people find that kind of annoying, and I can kind of agree with them on that. But it's definitely a big celebration song. We don't really know what they're celebrating, but that's kind of what the music video did for this song. It kind of showed all these stupid things that Brennan was doing that was like a huge celebration. Um, and it was just kind of funny. And as I said, it's not really one of my favorites, but it's still catchy as hell and gets me in a pretty good mood. The second track is Don't Threaten Me With A Good Time. This is one of my favorites, I think. It definitely grew on me a lot after the first listen. It's definitely Definitely the most fun out there party dancey song. It's very upbeat and the lyrics are a little bit cocky and kind of funny. Of course they sampled the guitar part from Rock Lobster so when I heard that I was kind of excited. This is the song that really describes the album cover you know he's talking about waking up at his neighbor's pool upside down on the roof with a perfect view that's pretty much what the um, cover is. And a lot of the lyrics are talking about being drunk and being at a party and wearing all these strange outfits. Just owning everyone though. And one of my favorite lyrics on this song as well as the whole album is, I'm not as think as you drunk I am. And that's just really funny and clever. And I love that he put that in there. This one's definitely a little bit hip hoppy in terms of like the music in this song and the way he kind of sings. And I think this one could fit onto Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die if it had to. And that brings us to Hallelujah. This song was the first one released for this album. It was before we even knew an album was really coming. Uh, and this one I'm not sure if it fits that well into this album. I mean, I feel like it would fit better towards the end of the album rather than where they placed it on here because it's kind of surrounded with all these fun, upbeat, uh, crazy songs and then just Hallelujah. Not saying that Hallelujah isn't like upbeat, but it's just a lot more toned down. And I actually did a lyric breakdown of this song. I think it's about Brendan kind of apologizing to us fans and saying that he's going to move forward now after all the craziness in the band, like with the lineup changes and just all the drama. And also along with all his mistakes that he's made, he's going to try and finally put that behind him. Uh, and that's just what this song is really about to me. I really love his vocals in this song. When I first heard it, you know, it reminded me a lot of older Panic! at the Disco. And the song in general is just really catchy and uplifting and kind of about starting over and just like being happy and you know, like say your prayers and it's just like a good um, song for like a group and it's very fun live as well. And this one mostly reminds me of Vice's Virtues. The fourth song is Emperor's New Clothes. I know a ton of people that were praising this song on the album. It's not really one of my favorites. When I first listened to it, you know, I was playing it on repeat, especially because of the music video. Um, it just has kind of that eerie, spooky sound to it, and it fit perfectly with the music video they did. And it's so unique and different from any of other Panic's songs. One of my favorite parts in this song is Brendan's really long, lengthening high note that he does. I think that's just so cool. He's really showing off on this song, as well as all these songs on this record. There's another element that's repeating in this song as well, just like with the uh, different chants. You know, this one is finders, keepers, losers, weepers. That kind of repeats just like in Victorious. But I do have to applaud one of the lyrics in this song. It says, heroes always get remembered, but you know legends never die. So this is another one kind of about, I think he's kind of talking about himself, how in a lot of these songs, you know, how he's like the best. Um, and he's just very confident on this record. I really like that, you know, confident is sexy. At the midpoint of the album, we have Death of a Bachelor. This song was premiered on BBC Radio 1, I think it was. Uh, way back in I guess September October I'm not sure but it wasn't actually released as a single like they didn't put it on iTunes or anything we just got to hear it on the radio and I think they uploaded it on YouTube and after those first couple of songs on this album this one just kind of just out there it's like where did this come from 
um, but I do like how different this song is because it's kind of a mix of like quick hip hop drums with this Sinatra-esque voice that Brendan is really good at portraying in his own way. I think Brendan actually said himself that this song kind of represents a bittersweet end of an era. So obviously Death of a Bachelor is the title track. It's basically about him kind of growing up. He's been married for a while now. It's time for him to put all that nonsense behind him. It's just kind of like hallelujah in a way, kind of like moving on. And this is, and I just think this is a very well done track, uh, definitely one of Brendan's best. Uh, I know a lot of people that really, really love this song, and there's other people who are kind of biased and don't like it just because it's slow. Like, come on, you gotta give it a chance, it's a really good song. Just because it's slow doesn't make it a bad track. On to the second half of the album, this is kind of where it shifts in sound and genre, in my opinion. The first half was a lot more upbeat and fun, and then this part of the album is more like jazzy. Um, in a way. So we're gonna start with Crazy Equals Genius. This is one of my favorites. I think it definitely grew on me a lot. I wasn't super into it when I first heard it because just because it's so all over the place and very different. But right now I do really love it. It's super theatric. Reminds me of like a big band, swinger band in like the 60s or something. Even like the 50s or 40s. You know, that kind of sound. I could just kind of picture this in one of those old animated Disney movies back from like the 70s and 60s. So I could definitely hear this in something like that. It's also kind of like a musical cool kind of song almost. He refers to the Beach Boys, Mike Love and Brian Wilson, Dennis Wilson, um, which is kind of interesting to me. But this song is mainly about being crazy and just glorifying that fact. And I would definitely say it's a bit much for casual listening because it is so out there and just so like exciting, you know? This song really takes me back to A Fever You Can't Sweat Out. You can totally hear that kind of same theatric vibe. Um, especially on the song, there's a good reason these tables are numbered, dot dot dot, too long for me to say. So I can definitely see where um, the influence of that record came into play when writing this one. And this track is just really one of the most fun out there songs on the record. Number six on this album is L.A. Devotee. I did a whole track review of this song. If you want to see my full thoughts, click up here. This song is probably my number one favorite on this album. I just really love the simplicity of it. I really like how catchy it is. It's just a really fun song to listen to. Um, and Brendan's vocals are really strong in this song as well. It's just very earwormy, and I really enjoy it, honestly. I, I don't mind it being stuck in my head. And it's totally a mix of Vices and Virtues and Too Weird to Live, Too Weird to Die. It could kind of fit on either of those in a way, but it's definitely more 2016 sounding. It's just a very lively, exciting song, and I'm still not tired of it. The chorus is just fantastic, you know, it's pretty much an ode to Los Angeles. Uh, which I just, I don't know, I just think it's a really fun song. I just really love the way this song sounds and how it flows. It's just very easy to listen to. And I do think this is one of the stronger points on this record. That brings us to my second favorite song, Golden Days. This is one of the ones that I was really pleased with hearing because with all the singles that they released, you know, I was afraid that the rest of the songs on the album weren't going to be as good as those, even though I didn't necessarily love all the singles they released. So I was kind of iffy about that. But when I heard this song, I was just so happy because this is just... It really reminds me of like older Panic. I love the way Brendan is singing and the theme of it is just really, really cool. The lyrics are great. It's kind of nostalgic and how he's gonna move forward and bring more golden days uh, with the rest of their life, which I'm pretty sure he's talking to like Sarah in this song. There, there are some guitar parts, which I enjoy. Um, the vocal performance is outstanding. Uh, especially the chorus. It really just blew me away. I was so impressed. I think it's definitely one of the best songs Brendan has written in a while. It's definitely become one of my favorite Panic of the Disco songs along with L.A. Devotee. Uh, those two I think are my favorites on this record as a whole. The Good, the Bad, and the Dirty this is another one that really grew on me. At first I kind of just overlooked it, but after a few listens it's become another one of my favorites on this record. It has a very catchy chorus. I enjoy the drums in this song as well. It's just very fun to listen to, just like all the songs on this record. And it definitely has that more mainstream kind of pop rock sound, and that makes it kind of earwormy and gets stuck in your head, but I do enjoy the simplicity of this song and I have a lot of fun when I listen to it. The next one is House of Memories. This is probably my least favorite song on the album just because, I don't know, I think all the other songs bring a lot more to the table other than this one. It just kind of seems like a filler track. It has that piano in there. It's more simple and it is catchy. We're also seeing that Sinatra vibe come back again vocally in this song and I assume this one's about him and Sarah again and how they've been living together for the last couple of years. You know, they've been married. You know, they've done a lot of things over the years and just kind of grew together and I think that's pretty much what this song is about. And that's another track that I think has that vices and virtues vibe that I really enjoy. And at the end of this album we have Impossible Year. This one is kind of sad but a little bit nostalgic and just kind of 
leaves a message to end this album. It's another slow piano jazzy song that has that Sinatra vibe. It's almost like a lullaby as well. It's a very kind of easy song to listen to to just play. There's a horn section in this as well which is just very pretty to listen to. Brendan also brings some really amazing beautiful vocals to this song as well. It's definitely a stronger point on this record and it makes for a great closing track to end this album. So overall I think Brendan Urie really found himself in this album and kind of just found a way to express himself truly and just did whatever he wanted on this record. And I really love how you can hear some different flavors from their older records in this one. And I just think this is a good way for Brendan to really showcase his talent. You know he did co-write with a couple of people on these songs and the lyrics as well but I think he did a good job for you know being the only member of the band and I think it was well done you know not everyone is gonna like it and not everyone does like it even some hardcore panic fans aren't really into this record and I respect that you know it's something very different but I personally really enjoy how diverse this record was because every single song it kind of sounds different what do I rate this album mm -hmm. four to five I'm not sure all I know is that I really have been enjoying this album I just, I find it so fun to listen to. I love the diversity of it. I know everyone's gonna have different opinions. Feel free to leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to have a little discussion with everybody. But remember, these are just my thoughts on this album. So let's get to the giveaway. This is probably the biggest giveaway I've ever done and will do for a while. There's a lot of prizes and only one person's gonna get all of them. The first prize is the Alternative Press magazine issue with Brendan Urie on the cover. I have that magazine as well as a signed poster, you guys. I actually bought this poster for myself. And then I was like, I'll give it away. You know how hard that is for me to do? I'm a huge Panic of the Disco fan. So I'm giving it 20, you guys. So the person who wins better really like Panic. You'll be getting that as well as this little tote bag that says Panic of the Disco on it that came with the alternative press issue as well. And along with that, you're gonna be getting this throwback poster that I've had since like 2009. I bought this on eBay, I think. As you can see, it's a really old picture. I believe it's from 2006. And that's not it. You're also gonna be receiving a copy of Death of a Bachelor on CD, as well as this cute little Brendan Urie pen. Isn't that fun? So that is a shit ton of prizes for one lucky person. So what do you have to do to win this? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the album, and I'm only gonna pick a winner who actually, you know, enjoyed the album. If you don't like the album, obviously you're not gonna be entered. So if you wanna enter, tell me you wanna be entered, and then tell me your favorite song from the album, your thoughts on it, whatever you wanna do. So with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and yeah, good luck with the giveaway. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.